and we are live. Do you want to take it away, Lauren, while I hop in the background and test it to see if it's going out? If it's really yeah. going out? <laughs> what is up, everybody? Good evening, and thank you for joining us for episode number 10 of the Tattoo Weekly on Guy Aitchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Network. So Jake Meeks, Gabe Ripley, and my eye are with you tonight, beaming out from several states across the U.S. We're happy to be beaming out from Reinvented Community as well, which offers a new medium for connecting with other artists, apprentices, and collectors. If you're watching us on YouTube, Facebook, or the Reinventing mobile app, let us know that all of our streams are working in the chat or tag a friend who, would, who loves tattoos just as much as you and would like to join us. So our Reinventing community has evolved over the last year into a quality network of live and on-demand art shows and classes. Some of them happen every single day. Uh, join Jason Leeser on Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern for his Reinventing Drawing Group and Drawing Groups happening Mondays at 9 a.m. as well. We're live on Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. with Ricardo Sertivan and stream the Tattoo Now show with Gabe Ripley every Wednesday at noon. You can join Cure for Fundamentals class that is geared towards apprentices at 10 a.m. on Thursday mornings and the Tattoo Collecting podcast at noon. You should stay up to date with all of our live events, and you can do so by checking out our schedule at community.reinventingthetattoo.com or in the events tab in our free mobile app. There you'll see the various drawing groups, interviews, and panels happening nearly every day. Also, uh, while we're on the topic, let's check out reinventing247.com for five channels that are beaming out all the time. They're perfect for your studio or to entertain tattoo clients. While you're there, you can register for a goodie bag with samples from Cheyenne Cartridges, Raw Pigments, and d Lies Pro. Actually, uh, since we're all live right now and um, all of you watching, we're going to give away a free sample pack to a professional tattooer who can best answer why they're watching tonight. And we'll announce the winner later in the show. So let us know in the comments what you're excited about watching for tonight. Aside from some of our live events, we want to note the Reinventing the Tattoo canon has expanded with new chapters and online content. You can join subscribers who are actively working to better their skill set on Monday evening class led by Gay Hson every Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Other Reinventing Educational content courses and webinars are available to you, whether you're in lockdown or pursuing professional development. Also, to get a look, uh, firsthand look at what the Monday classes are all about, go to courses.reinventing or to watch a free webinar and a public Monday night exercise with Jesse Smith. Uh, before we get started with the weekly, I'd like to shout out some of our sponsors for making this a pre community just for you. We have World Tattoo Events, the largest, most comprehensive resource for tattoo events in the world. Lots of stuff is changing like COVID crazy, so make sure you go to their website to see what's happening. Also, thank you to Donna at Inkjet Stencils. Uh, print stencils directly from your mobile or computer. Save your time, your apprentice's hands, your own hands. Webinars and free samples at inkjetstencils.com. Thank you to Raw Pigments, an ink company that's tapping into the source with acrylic-free pigments that have been impressing artists across the globe. Find their newly updated website at rawpigments.co. Thank you to d -Lies Pro, known internationally as Dermalize Pro. Uh, protect your art. If you're using Saran Wrap, watch some videos of tattooers to see what is all about DermalizePro.com. Also, of course, Gabe's Tattoo Now, technology for tattooers more than 25 years. There you'll see a lot of different stuff, awesome tattoos, always fresh content. And of course, thank you, Guy Aitchison, the founder and inspiration behind Reinventing the Tattoo. You can find his biomech encyclopedias, DVDs, machines, paintings, and more at GuyAgeson.com. And of course, our affiliates, thank you, Jake at the Fireside Tattoo Network, the Apprenticeship Diaries, and Eco-Friendly Tattoo Supplies.com. So we hope you'll hang on uh, around after the Tattoo Weekly tonight for the third night of the South Pacific Lockdown Escape, led by Guy Aitchison, the Inglorious Hoko, and Adrian Dominic. We'll be doing live figure drawing for more, probably I would say three hours tonight. So it'd be awesome to see you guys there. And I'm going to let Jake in now. Awesome, Gabe, are you still there? I am, that was great. Thank you very much. I was uh, in the background. Looks like Facebook isn't being very happy with the streaming. So I copied the YouTube link around, but that might let everybody know if you can uh, shoot a, uh, you know, make a story or make a, if you can share it around because um, We'd love to get as many people watching because we've got Guy Aitchison coming on, the Inglorious Hoko later. And then, um, yeah, so they'll be joining us in about uh, 15 or about 25 minutes. 
Um, so, yeah. Let's uh, roll the clip. What did you say before we... Uh, ah, the intro. Take? Yeah. There we go. Oh, wait, let's... Uh, I'm going to... Yeah. It just gets We're better getting... every time I see it. What's up, Jake? <laughs> What's up? How are you guys? Doing pretty good tonight. Good. Fantastic. Good. How are you? Great, great. Just scrambling. I, uh, I I got off a plane, ran straight to dinner for my father-in-law's birthday, and then got here to set up and realized that all my podcast gear is still in my bags from the plane because ah. I went out of town to podcast. So I had to, in 30 seconds or less, hook everything up as fast as I could nice. to get back on camera. So. <laughs> Well, luckily, That's, I've got that if down. You, uh, if you could put yourself into focus. Oh, okay. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Let me you got it. Maybe you just had there. to do that thing. Yeah. You know, I've, I've got the, uh, the this camera set up on um, uh, where you can touch focus. If you want to hit us, if you want to focus on a certain thing and you're behind the camera, you just touch that spot and it'll zoom in on it. The problem is if you're not looking at the screen, you can accidentally touch a spot that's not your face. And then, <laughs> uh, and then you're focusing yeah. on some background thing. Uh, so, Jake, uh, do you want to um, check in the background to see if we're streaming out on the Fireside Network while uh, Lauren and I, I introduce ourselves? Yeah, yeah, sure will. Go for it. All right. Uh, I'm Gabe Ripley from uh, Tattoo Now. I'm a, a computer geek, uh, and I am the well, kind of CTO of Reinventing, but uh, definitely excited to always catch up with uh, Tattoo Now show interviews as well as talk about upcoming uh, events. Um, the clips that I cut out for the show that to, uh, for tonight's show include uh, Thea Duskin, who I just interviewed last week, as well as a back piece from um, Dana Helmuth that was recorded uh, way back in the day. Yeah. Awesome. Always good to hear from you, Gabe. Uh, hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for watching. I'm Lauren. I work with uh, Reinventing the Tattoo uh, and Raw Pigments. I, I'm a traveler at heart, so I'm excited to be on the road, although, of course, cautious. I've enjoyed working in our Reinventing virtual offices where I've been becoming more and more savvy on how to connect, I guess, uh, through the internet, which has been had pros and cons. We love the real world events. But uh, yeah, you can find me pretty much all the time. Uh, in the reinventing app or uh, at Lauren Worldwide on Instagram. And yeah, my interests for tonight are going to kind of highlight some stuff that was happening. A quick highlight from Jason at the Philadelphia Tattoo Convention, as well as bringing up the, uh, the call for evidence, uh, evidence, I guess, report that's happening in the United Kingdom in the UK. So we'll yeah, talk about I'm that a little further. I'm excited to, uh, excited to hear about that. Uh, okay, I think our live stream should be rolling. I had it on private. It's not private now, though. <laughs> so we should be good on Fireside. Yep. Looks, Looks like it perfect. Is. Awesome. Yeah. So we do. Uh, we have 20 minutes before we bring a guy on. So we could uh, actually get this get it tight. Woo. All right. All right. Your introduction. My introduction. I'm Jake Meeks from the Fireside Tattoo Network. Uh, I'm really fast at putting my gear together and getting in front of the camera. I'm really bad at live streaming. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, now, the Fireside Tattoo Network has been... Um, doing uh, regular tattoo education content for about eight and a half, nine years now. We do a weekly podcast and uh, technique series. We have several uh, courses to help tattooers draw better pictures mainly. And um, uh, and just love, you know, meeting new tattooers and talking to tattooers we've known a long time and picking their brains and stealing their tricks. 
and all that kind of stuff. I actually spent this last week, uh, weekend, two days in a row getting tattooed by one of my favorite tattooers, Andy Chambers, and I got the podcast with him yesterday, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as the show goes on. Awesome. I'm out of focus again, aren't I? Just like, Maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's coming in and out, but... All right, I'm going to let you guys take it for a second. I'm going to figure out what's up with this kid. Sure. Lauren, uh, take it away, Lauren. That's what's up. Okay, uh, here we go. So you guys, I want to kind of briefly touch on this because it's kind of a lot to take in. So uh, one second. In the United Kingdom, they have HSC has released what they call a call for evidence. It's basically urging manufacturers or professional working tattooers to provide references and reliable data and so what they're going to be doing is publishing a report in April of 2022. And so what the report is going to do is prepare the uh, dossier for substances to, to like look for what's in tattoo inks and PMU and will largely affect the pigments that will be permitted for use in the UK now. Um, and a, so, a PMU is permanent makeup, correct? Yeah, yeah okay, permanent. Cool. Uh, they're giving artists and manufacturers, importers, distributors, and retails retailers uh, to respond eight weeks from now. And that number is kind of dwindling. I think it's more like seven weeks to respond to this document, which I'll kind of show you some of the stuff that they're looking for. So the type of information they're looking for is uh, what is in pigments, what dilutants or solvents are being used, the quantities, cost, availability of alternatives, uh, hazard and risk profiles. They're looking for all this stuff. So, and I, I would assume in my imagination the, the FDA is going to take this into consideration because there really isn't thorough reporting like this happening with consumers. Um, so I guess this would impact the rest of the world, if you think, because we're the major distributors of the world producing 90% of the tattoo pigments. Um, so again, this report is being made to decide if it's necessary to in introduce new measures. So the call for evidence closes on November 2nd. Uh, and that's, that's open up to the entire world. We've done our part the, like I said, that type of reporting um, is going to be used, hopefully, in the in the favor of tattooers. But um, any little changes could affect your entire palette. So, hmm. I, I was I, I missed the very first part of that. Um, that but I heard you say uh, something about part of what they are looking for is if there are alternatives to to products that we're already using or more affordable alternatives. Is that what you said? Availability of alternatives. Availability of alternatives. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's odd to me. It seems it seems to me that you know if 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 I'm in the business of manufacturing pigment and, and making tattoo ink, uh, and that's my job, I'm probably as an entrepreneur gonna gonna do a much better job of of analyzing all of the uh, uh, alternatives to whatever my raw materials are than any government. Uh, entity might you know what i mean i, I don't understand yep. i guess why 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 they would step into that piece of i understand you know, regulating the the you know the, being curious about the uh you know the safety of of all of the individual you know elements but i don't understand what why they want to know yeah. what the alternatives are yeah, I, I think the whole thing is kind of muddy right now but uh one thing i've noticed and there are there is definitely some backlash but um, the, they do reference who they talk to. And I see some of the bigger companies. I saw Eternal post about it. I haven't really seen too many others. Um, but how does that impact like what they know, you know, that they haven't known before? It's, it's not new information that's being shared because there's no major studies. Why are they asking us is what I'm trying to get at. So Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I don't know. And you said the... the um, this was the EU, right? Sorry, I missed the first part of the. Oh, uh, this uh, is actually the UK. UK. The UK, yeah. okay. So the UK is kind of responding what's hat like to what's happening in Europe with their own form, and I know Australia has done the same too. So we have to definitely keep that type of stuff on our radar, see what they're coming up with, and um. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's having that information should totally be available, readily available. But the fact that they're kind of t intertwining doesn't quite make sense well now is this where like what the john john swick is that the uh, the fellow who's swick? down you know swick is, you know he, now he's studying like what's inside of the inks inside of the skins or, or is he just studying the reactions not necessarily the ingredients yeah he's studying how light affects what's inside but determining what's inside he said these they're having difficulties with in some to some regard that he's able to disclose mm. Mm. 
Um, well, it would be good to know what's like, you know, going in our bodies, I guess. I don't know. I, I certainly don't necessarily trust uh, the government to, to regulate us properly and, and given their track records and whatnot. But um, I mean, one way or another, I suppose, uh, you know, we got to make sure what we're putting in our bodies actually is safe just because we've been doing it forever. I mean, I mean, I mean, we have been doing it forever and it seems to be pretty safe, but um, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I yeah. have rainbow colored lymph nodes. <laughs> I've right. lasered enough shit off of me too. So, yeah, and and I wonder, and of course, the ink manufacturers would know a lot more about this than than, than I would. But we, you know, obviously, we have a ton more colors than we had twenty years ago. Uh, it, but I've, I've, from what I understand, talking to the the handful of people who know inks that that I that I have, there really are only still like fourteen or sixteen base pigments uh, that everything is kind of being mixed off of, which doesn't sound like that many more than than back in the nineties. You know, I think I could probably get eight or ten base pigments you know whenever i started tattooing uh so i, I don't feel like but you know like i said I, I i really don't know i guess that the 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 pigment itself the dry pigment has to be the big question mark right because as far as the other the, the you know the the preservatives and surfactants and, and things like that those are all the same things that people use in a, a trillion different products that go in and on our bodies there's nothing unique about the carriers right it's just the pigment is the question is it not uh, for the most part, but there are some proprietary blends. I'm sure they're eyeing up that aren't like necessarily what you would see out of a reputable company in the U.S., but they still exist. Hmm. So, I mean, there's different types of ways you can attack it. I don't want to take up too much time on the on that, but to do your own research again, that's HSE in the U.K. and look up their website. Uh, you could even just, you know, get as far as answering some of the questions just to see what they're asking if you're curious. Yeah. To kind yeah. of develop your own opinion right yeah that's interesting i'll be and, and we'll be able to at, at the deadline for that proof of whatever the term was um november 2nd november 2nd and this yeah. term is what proof of what proof of they're calling it a call for evidence oh call for evidence yeah. right. so, so it's basically applicable for the tattoo ink companies to submit their you know no yeah. one else is really able to submit it like we, none of us have evidence about it right Right. Yeah, and they, they did note that in regards to like the backlash, pretty much the backlash of what happened in Europe, uh, they're they're saying that they want to actually give us a chance to submit, you know, anything that we have on file, any reports, anything like that. So it's up to the ink companies to uh, kind of, you know, and, and tattooers go, go to bat for themselves. For well, themselves like what, yeah. Okay, so the tattooers are submitting evidence that they've been uh, historically using these inks for 25 years or 20 years or 10 years. Yeah. It falls uh, on the with, whole with no supply reactions. chain. Yeah. They're asking questions that could be applicable to like a retailer or a wholesaler, importer, artist, manufacturer, supplier. Uh, but yeah, I know that affects us all. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be curious to see what, what they, what kind of information they would want from tattooers. I feel like they would really be getting in over their heads because, you know, yeah. as tattooers, we, we really don't know what we're, uh, <laughs> what we're looking at most of the time. You know, a lot of times issues that arise in the skin were from, you know, our own practices, you know, maybe our lack of technical ability or, you know, it, it, who, who knows any number of things. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping so maybe uh, reactions. Let's, let's, maybe. Yeah. Let's, let's catch up with the next thing. Cause obviously um, there's only so much, that we know we can we pointed people in the right direction so do we have time uh, or do you guys want to jump in on yours gabe i don't well we've got uh 11 minutes left so you go know. for it i really i really have nothing the definite that i need to uh that i need to talk about i was running behind today so I, i'd love to hear what you guys have to say first if there's time for me great if not fine. uh gabe since we have the tattoos i think we might need to jump in right um to it oh do we want to do a uh uh let's do i'll run the tattoos of the tattoo nows of the day and we could uh, check out some awesome tattoos before Guy hops on. And then maybe we might have time for a, uh, a clip, but I am pretty psyched for, for this shit here. Okay. I said so, that we were going to give away a goodie bag too. So if you guys uh, happen to drop a comment about why you're watching tonight, we will be sending one of those out to you tomorrow. Awesome. Okay. Now I have these all fired up into a uh, PowerPoint presentation now. And uh, so this is some of the uh, one of the Koreans who's been updating tattoo now, a, a Maleficent tattoo. Um, Hain Kwa Kim from 369 Ink Studio. Yeah. Can you guys all see this? Yeah, we can. We can. That's right. nice. It's nice that that snake looks wet. Sure does. Huh? It's uh, 
you know, uh, obviously very, it is also very white skin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's uh, you know, the next, uh, next tattoo I have fired up here oh, is, uh, can you take a guess? Uh, I'm going to guess Jake? Nick Baxter. Yeah, uh, Mr. Baxter. Yeah. I did a, um, a recent uh, interview with him and uh, Sean Barber where, oh, and you, you, yeah, yeah. You, we'll be heading up with you to the uh, Inspiring Tours where Nick and Sean will be doing yeah. um, out, like basically an outdoor plein air and then some still life, some portrait paintings. Yeah, and, uh, awesome. Look at those leaves. I, I love I love the transition that Nick has made back to uh, you know more of a, uh, for lack of a better term, more of a kind of uh, traditional tattoo style, but still keeping his uh, you know, still keeping a lot of his painterly kind of effects in there. But he's using bold outlines and you know and uh, and it's gone back to a more traditional approach. I talked last time I had him on, on my show. I talked to him a little bit about that and, and what you know and, and talked about his reasoning and uh, uh, I really love it. I think it's I think it's super unique. Uh, and I, and I, the thing is, I haven't seen any of this stuff, the, this, this kind of stuff that he's doing a lot now in person, but I guarantee you it's a thousand times better than the video and the video is great. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, that's the, he's one of those guys that every time you see his work in person, you go like, man, no photo ever shows how good. You absolutely. A hundred percent. You know, and that's where it's like all the people that are Photoshopping it or whatever. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, real tattooers. It doesn't make it almost how much you Photoshop it. The, uh, you know, the tattoo looks always like, again, like something like this. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, yeah, you know, great. just seeing this large and in life has got to be fucking killer. I mean, this is killer. So this mm-hmm. is uh, Robert Hernandez, needless to say. Beautiful. And um, <laughs> he'll be beaming in. Tony Ramel is going to be interviewing him uh, at the BYOB main stage. Uh, Robert nice. will be beaming in, uh, presumably from Spain, but who knows? He's traveling around a lot. He was just at a convention this weekend. All right. Yeah. Yeah. To, to your point, you were talking about photoshopping tattoos. A lot of people would take a tattoo like this, uh, you know, drop the background to solid black, soften all the edges and then really pump the contrast. So it didn't even look like a tattoo or a body. And it would, you know, it, it, it wouldn't be the, wouldn't be the same. This shows what the tattoo really looks like. And it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. I'm pretty psyched. I got a video, uh, video is working in tattoo now, finally. It was like 11 o'clock yeah. at night. I'm like, I can't help it. I got to program it. And fucking three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, I got it working. <laughs> but, uh, this is a uh, uh, Joby Cummings, I believe okay. from uh, cat tattoo. I've heard of cat tattoo. Yeah. They're in uh, Edison, Texas. Hmm. A lot of great tattooers come through there and are there now. They, uh, I'll be heading down there in I think uh, October for some consulting work. If anybody's in the uh, Edison, Dallas, Texas area, I think we're actually having a reinventing party at a, a cat tattoo. Nice. Oh, that's nice. This is a uh, Mully from Independent Tattoo in Fort Myers, Florida. Yeah. Nice little hand action. Yeah. Yeah. And, I know, like obviously, the uh, absolutely. The, the knuckle tattoos are in there too, right? Those aren't just standard letters. <laughs> No, I don't know yeah. Him, but like, yeah. you know, everyone, but uh, yeah, no, this, uh, this is a cool hand too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, that's nice. Yeah. Left it nice and open. Simple. Oh, oh, oh look at that. Uh, Christian Perez down at ah. uh, Hope Gallery. Nice. And Christian uh, Perez is teaching at uh, Paradise BYOB? Yeah, or? he's doing a, a oil painting, skull oil painting. Nice. Uh, I just got his. Um, what do you call them? The, uh, the, the list of supplies, the supply list for the oil nice. painting. And he'll also be doing it virtually. He's got some people registering. So uh, if you want to check it out live, definitely register in advance. But he will be there in person? Is that right? He will be there in person. Yeah. Awesome. We'll be recording uh, him at Jiminy Peak and beaming him out. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And then Nick Mitchell, he's also going to be in person at the yeah. BYOB teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. I, you know, the 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 tattoos are so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. This is Andy and I had a good discussion last night just about you know um, a lot about color and value and things like that and and something like this. Such a good example of of how. um, Whoa, that looks like a mess. What is that? Oh, that was my desktop, huh? Ah, you got a peek into my brain. Sorry, sorry about that. (laughs) Uh, We were. uh, we were just talking last night about, you know, about desaturating uh, 
tones to pull other things forward. And this is such a nice example of that, the kind of like soft tones in the belly and in the face. And then the way that the, all the contrast comes into the uh, little foreground. Um, what is that in the foreground? I don't even know what it is, but the little oh, foreground. He's ripping, he's eating something. It's a car. Yeah, tearing, yeah, whatever he's tearing apart there. Uh, you know, how it all, all the focus just goes straight to that because it's the strongest areas of contrast and it's the, you know, the boldest color, the darkest blacks, the sharpest edges, all that stuff happens right there. But that doesn't work the same if you tried to like, you know, even something as simple as, as like leaving the eyes without, uh, without any detail, like having that kind of soft glazed eye. If you, yeah. if you finish those eyes and it like made them like, you know, where they had like an, a, an iris and a pupil and a strong oh, highlight, yeah, it yeah. would, com it would compete with the, yeah. with the kind of guts and stuff down below. So really, uh, really well thought out. This is a cool piece. Absolutely. And uh, fucking guy. Yeah, Look at this. Nice. I, uh, I've also figured out how to. Yeah, yeah I've been working on uh, all the updates. Yeah, but guy will be really beaming nice. in. You know, obviously everybody that uh, you know. <laughs> we're bringing it's, the best talent from around the world that we can to the BYOB. So we're going to keep talking about it. But guy will be beaming in for the uh, under the stage on Monday of the BYOB, October fourth, uh, right after the vapors of morphine. And the cool thing about it is, you know, even though some folks are beaming in and some of us will be there in person uh, because of COVID, so many of the viewers will be being, beaming in. So it won't really matter, you know, who's actually there and who's not, unless you have a physical ticket, you know, in which case you probably want to huh? see everyone you can. But but those are so limited that. Uh, yeah, you know, so, you know, obviously in person's best, there's, uh, you know, uh, less than 100 people per room. And, you know, Jimmy Peak is generally pretty small to begin with. But, um, yeah, I mean, there are still tickets. So people should definitely, if they're into coming, it's very outdoorsy. Yeah. And, you know, there's lots of, uh, um, yeah. you know, lots of space. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be going in guys between. Really cool. it, yeah, it was fucking out of control. So this is, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Justin Hammond Tree from Painted Temple out in Salt Lake City, Utah. That's uh, Oak Adams' shop. And, nice. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. They upload pretty pretty frequently, and uh, I think he was out in the uh, Keystone. I met all, met all them at the Keystone, but uh, that's painted tree. And then uh, I got one more. This is another one from uh, from oh, Korea. Wow. Uh, Unabi, uh, E U E U N B E E, and they're uh, they're in Seoul, forty two West. Oh wow, that's really really cool. I love those painted flowers. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Yeah, that's uh, bam. There's a lot happening there. That's really, really nice. We're uh, going to be putting together a virtual Korean design conference. Um, yeah. We'll figure out the language barriers, but yeah, this is uh, this is stuff that's pretty stellar. That is nice. What's that? Part? Oh, I don't have anything to write with. I'll, I'll get I'll get the information from you after. Uh, the... E U N B E E. And uh, yeah, you know what? I'm hoping that I catch ahead of this. I was like hammering these uh, slideshows out at the very last minute. I could, mm. you know, get their names in there and their shop stuff. So um, yeah. if people keep updating Tattoo Now, then um, I'll work on, be able to work on it ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, so we have, uh, Looks we, have like got... a, we, we do have, a, well, is guy, guy's not on yet. Okay. So maybe we should uh, run a video, Lauren, and then um, we could bring him in. Uh, your uh, your uh, mic is off, Lauren. We can welcome Guy in right now. He uh, just entered. Oh, All perfect. Right. All right. Good evening. Hello. Hey, Guy. How goes it? It goes great. Awesome. Um, has hey, anybody caught? Hey, hey again. good to see you. Sorry, what were you saying, uh, Gabe? Well, I guess I was wondering if uh, the Inglorious Hoko has the uh, the links. Well, I was leaving up to you guys to get that out to him. He knows this is happening, right? Oh, he knows it's happening, but I don't. Um... I don't have this contact info. So, so, okay. so I think what we're going to do, Lauren, do you want to run that clip so that we could uh, fire him up in the background? Okay, I'll do that. I'll look for him. Sure. Uh, which uh, which clip, the Jason one? Uh, 
No, no. Why don't we fire the uh, Dana Helmuth one? Because this is a this is a clip from about like ten or twelve years ago. This is uh, a Tattoo Now TV clip, and uh, this is Dana Helmuth doing a back piece uh, from start to finish. Um, he's a, a traditional American traditional Jap- Asian traditional tattooer out of um, Delaware or Maryland, Maryland, Delaware. Uh, Dana Helmuth. You you want to search for him? And uh, I, I know that name. Uh, you have the you have the, the video. Yeah. Uh, Gabe? Oh, you know what? I don't. I, I, I uploaded it to the... Uh, I mean, All I do right. have it. Uh, I uploaded uh, it to the uh, sure. folder. I can... I, I have it somewhere here. I have it in my downloads wanted... folder. Cool. I got, no. it. I got it. Okay. I was just going to uh, pull it right up for you. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Share screen. Share sound. Optimize for video clip. Here we go. Dana Helmuth from like a million years ago. So that is, uh, yeah, Dana Helmuth, and you should definitely be checking him out on the Instagrams at, uh, at Dana Helmuth. He's, uh, yeah, he's just a, a fantastic tattooer, great inspiration. And um, what was the, what was, was that sound? Oh, uh, I can't hear like you, Jake. A, oh, oh, oh <laughs> you can't yeah. hear me? That was a pretty interesting sound. Let's See, just which say. Side? He tattooed uh, this side of my neck is uh, Dana Helmuth. I can't hear anybody. Is that me or is that a... Is that, a... that would be you. Yeah, it must be you. I can, testing, I testing, can hear. testing, 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 testing. I'm able to hear everyone just fine. And the sound, yeah, whatever that was. Yeah, whatever that sound was, crazy. <laughs> I was trying to I, I don't take know it all if in. That was, if that was actually a super obnoxious soundtrack or if there was like a, a Zoom echo going on there, <laughs> turning yeah. some something that was meant to be sort of ambient and eerie into, you know, this thundering mind wrecker. (laughs) (laughs) Thundering mind wrecker. Yeah. Yeah. That seems more likely. So last week, that was an awesome video (laughs) aside from the sound. Last week was pretty interesting. I'll say, by the way. Great. 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 Good to see you, man. Uh, Yeah. That, um, yeah, that was, that was, that was beautiful. Great, great piece. We should have better sound. 
So, um, uh, have these guys filled the, you in a bit on uh, the South Pacific uh, lockdown escape? No, I, I've heard Gabe use the term, but I don't know what it is. What What is the South Pacific lockdown escape? Okay. So, I mean, right now we've we've just uh, we've we're going to have our third event uh, in twenty minutes or so. Uh, which is uh, a bunch of Australian, New Zealand artists uh, joining us to do live figure drawing. So, you know, we're doing, doing quick poses from photos and, you know, treating it kind of the way that you would with, you know, if you got together with live figure models and actually, you know, did poses. And it's actually been fun. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. This will be our uh, second time doing it with that group. But uh, the reinventing uh, members have been doing it for the whole past month. We did, did five sessions. So it was great. Nice. So, uh, yeah, there's that, uh, uh, and glorious Hoko, Adrian Dominic and I did a, uh, uh, a collaborative, uh, ZBrush session where anybody oh. who wanted to learn more about ZBrush, you know, we tried to explain technically what we were doing and, you know, I, I, you know, asked a lot of questions. Hoko is, you know, he doesn't consider himself, you know, uh, a maestro by any means, but, uh, you know, compared to, to me, I mean, his, I don't know if you've seen his, uh, models that he uses for his tattoos, but they're really, yeah. uh, horrifying and elegant and just, just very nicely done. And he knows how to do a 3d rendering in such a way that you could break it down to a tattoo stencil pretty easily, which is, mm -hmm. uh, easier said than done. You know, I used to do yeah. some 3d modeling stuff, uh, with this, uh, app called Bryce uh, decades ago. And I always found that uh, it was very tricky to take it from there into uh, onto skin in a way that made it a better tattoo than, you know, something that was just drawn up using all the compositional rules and everything else, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've never used uh, ZBrush. I'm blown away by, by folks that are using it and, and, and using it. Well, I remember you building uh, some, some, actual models and photographing them and things like that to, to make drawings from haven't you had like clay models as well oh yeah yeah i still do that yeah, still do that uh, sometimes i'll combine you know the really hard parts the things that have a lot of symmetry or whatever i'll sometimes build those parts digitally and uh but you know the things that you could build with clay and, and you know use uh, little fake foliage from train sets and stuff like mm -hmm. that to simulate moss and you know all that stuff. I mean, I, I can't resist doing it analog style. It's, uh, uh, I think a lot of fun. Sure. Yeah. So that is the South, South Pacific. It's, it's a drawing group. Is that right? Well, okay. So that's the first, uh, events that we've had so far, but what we're doing is we're inviting, uh, anybody who's in that region. And this does include, uh, uh, South Korea and Vietnam as well. You know, the, the entire area, if, if anyone in the, uh, you know, the uh, South Pacific Islands, you know, wants, wants to hop onto this. So what we're doing is we're encouraging artists from that area to host group with us. Speaking of, of uh, your artist of the night has entered our waiting room. Uh, guy. Oh, good timing. All right. Which happy to hear, know. happy to hear him. <laughs> So All right, he's got his video off now, but welcome, welcome. There go. All right. Hey. hey. Okay. Yeah. Hey. This time we've got everything working live, and uh, so uh, we've we've got uh, Lauren here from uh, who you met last week. We've got Jake Meeks. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, Fireside nice. Tech Podcast. I don't know if you've ever seen any of those, but uh, you've done a ton of episodes now, uh, hundreds now, right? Hundreds, yeah, yeah, almost. We're, we're we're coming up on ten years of of Fireside, pretty fast. Nice, and uh, yeah. So so this is uh, a show that uh, we do every Sunday night, the the Tattoo Weekly, and uh, so we're having you join us as a as a guest before we uh, start our figure and uh, drawing session uh, in uh, twenty minutes. But uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Inglorious Hoko. Uh, you grew Cheers, up man. in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, born and raised here in New Zealand. Um, kind of born uh, in a nowhere kind of town, small country town, and yeah, lived here on and off my whole life. So, yeah. I'm curious, when you were a teenager, like or even younger, was tattoo culture already a thing that you saw a lot of, or did you have to kind of seek it out? 
Well, tattoo culture was kind of, um, it took a little while for New Zealand to catch up. Um, there was always people around me um, that had tattoos, but they were often very, very bad tattoos, like a lot of home jobs, um, uh, especially on my father's side of the family. Um, like a lot of his friends and whatnot were kind of, you know, he, he's Maori, so there was a lot of like kind of just, uh, there was a bit of a culture where Maori people back in the day would kind of just tattoo their hands with just, you know, a stick and poke and just do really bad tattoos all over them. So when I was growing up, I didn't really want tattoos so much. Um, but then I got my first tattoo when I was 17 and I was just hooked from there. And from there, the the kind of the uh, tattoo scene in New Zealand started to catch up with the, with the rest of the world. So yeah, it, um, it took a little while, but we're, st- we're slowly getting it. Yeah. It seems like there's uh, a higher uh, concentration of, of really good artists per capita in uh, New Zealand and Australia as well. I've, I've found, you know, than you would expect, you know, you, you see a lot of really great art coming out of uh, both continents. Uh, I, I, I agree. Uh, it's, 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 it's mind blowing how many great tattooers are in that area. Yeah, there are there are a lot of good artists over here. I think, um, especially in New Zealand, there's a very much a DIY attitude where people just kind of um, they just push it. You know, I guess like smaller countries, I think I think there's kind of like an element of there's not all that much in their country, so people kind of push it a little bit harder. Um, so countries like Poland and whatnot, where there's almost like an element of desperation, so they get really really good at tattooing or art. You know. Um, I think New Zealand is a little bit like that as well. Hmm. So, so watching uh, some of your process, sorry, sorry, guy. I'm watching some of your process right there in, in, in ZBrush, it was just, it's awesome. It looks so good. Go yeah, ahead. No, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, I really yeah, enjoyed I mean, doing that sort of thing. Before, before you actually came on, I was commenting to Jake how uh, you seem to have figured out the, the ways to render these things in such a way that it can uh, be stencil ready and, you know, and tattooable in such a way that it looks so strong and high contrast on skin. Yeah. Well, I generally, basically I kind of have like a, an approach to rendering these images with the lighting, especially um, of where I'm kind of, uh, I'm thinking constantly of like old school horror movie, black and white sort of um, imagery, like say Frankenstein. You know, just very strong overhead light sources that just cast deep shadows and glowing eyes and stuff like that. It just really works perfectly for tattooing. But I mean, it works especially well for what I do because I like to do, you know, macabre, dark, black and gray. So it works very, very well for that. Um, but yeah, I find that when rendering these sculptures, it's almost like the simpler the better. I just do like a simple gray kind of clay shader and just simple lighting, you know, three-point lighting. And uh, yeah, it works amazing for tattooing. Some of the color oh, yeah. effects that you're getting are really, I, I didn't realize, I don't know anything about ZBrush, but I was just, Gabe, you were just flipping through a, a couple that had this kind of like warm light coming from through the figure's head and then a, and then a cool light on the other side. And, and those, those lighting effects are so fantastic and so believable. It'd be really difficult to invent those uh, without that, you know, or as accurately, I guess, without well, that. You're, yeah. you're, you're not doing any color though, right? Um, very, very rarely do I do color. Like, yeah, <laughs> this was Once a model again. that I was looking at. Yeah, yeah. It, it looked like it was a model, Gabe, that you were doing past. Or was that someone else? Was I looking at no, someone I, else's work? It was that. that. That was part of uh, Hoko's gallery. Yeah, I saw that yeah. too. And mm-hmm. and so I guess if you were to take something like that and tattoo it, uh, and it's that one that looks a little bit like a xenomorph head that mm-hmm. uh, has like a warm underlight. And if you were going to uh, tattoo it in such a way that uh, you're able to get. It, sorry. Yeah, it's um, it, it was in that uh, in that last one you were just in. You yeah, had to scroll one, through the one with that just, statue, one that with the one. statue, and, and just page through those. Pretty yeah. sure there's. Is that the only just one? a single? Uh, yeah, one, a single one of them picture. had multiple images you could scroll through. That's where it was. Okay. So, yeah. Um, well, but anyway, uh, I think that when rendering some something like that without the advantage of color to help uh, separate the the planes you just have to be really careful to like limit certain values in, in each of those areas like not go any lighter than a certain value and then some some highlights uh in the secondary color right i mean i'm sure you've got this all thought out 
Yeah, well, the reason I oh, generally um, put like a warm kind of secondary light is because I don't want the, um, the shadows to just be completely flat one tone. You know, like I really want to say underneath a jaw, I want to be able to capture the darkest point of that shadow and then have a dark shadow tone, which is almost like a mid shadow tone underneath it to give it a rounded edge and um, really help bring that up off the skin. So that's that's a reason why I would do maybe like a warm underglow or something like that. And that can be any color that you want it to be. Um, I just tend to gravitate towards warmer colors um, when it comes to that kind of light. That's a uh, that's kind of a traditional painting mindset, kind of details in the shadows. Do you are you a traditional painter as well? Are you an oil painter or anything like that? Or um, mostly <laughs> I like I like to pretend I'm an oil. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> yeah. um, it's one of those things where I'm where I, I love oil painting, but I'm, I'm also uh, very respectful and scared of the medium to an extent. Um, but uh, for example, there's a painting in the background uh, there that I started in a lockdown last year, and I haven't touched since, just because I'm kind of scared to continue it, you know. <laughs> so, but I, I do, um, I do often study like kind of the old masters, um, and in regards to that kind of warm light in the shadows, and you know, um, they tend to, especially in facial tones, the old masters would you know go on for like a burnt sienna or whatever, and and uh, do like a warm shadow tones and then kind of cold highlights, and yeah, so I kind of. Um, I'm very influenced by classical art. So, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. yeah, yeah. Speaking of, uh, of of painting and of your area, one of one of my favorite, uh, not only oil painters but 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 uh, painting instructors is from New Zealand. Uh, Andrew Tischler. Do you follow Andrew Tischler at all? Uh, has a no, fantastic YouTube channel, but he's he's in New Zealand and he's always painting the New Zealand landscape. And I'm just blown away that it's a real place. Every time he sets up and does something plain air, I go like, wow, that's a real place that you're standing in. <laughs> it looks amazing. I wonder what part of New Zealand he's in, because there's definitely some very, very beautiful landscapes around New Zealand, mm, especially yeah. in the South Island. Incredible. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly where he is. His, his, his YouTube channel is fantastic. He's a great instructor and a, and a really great painter. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Andrew Ch Andrew Tischler. Uh, you said. Tischler. T I. I was trying to spell it in my head. T I S C H L E R. I think. T I S C H L E R. Yeah. Right, I'm going to look him up after yeah. this interview. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to hop off you guys and get the other uh, night started on the other Zoom, and I will see you guys in a few minutes for the live figure right. drawing. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody, for joining. See you in a minute. Yeah. Good to see you, Lauren. There you go, Andrew Tischler. Oh That's wow. Yeah, and they're huge, and they're, you yeah, know, they're yeah. beautiful. I like his portraits. I really love his landscapes. His landscapes are just on another level to me, uh, especially watching them, you know, come to life in 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 real. Yeah, his YouTube channel it shows the process of all of these, and uh, uh, he's he's really good. Yeah, wow, there's yeah, a yeah. little bit of the like the Hudson River School mm -hmm. there. You know? Absolutely, um, yeah. It's because yeah. actually, I I had no idea that there was. Anyone New Zealand kind of painting to this kind of level. You know? uh, yeah. of, <laughs> right. Every day you discover a new artist, but I've been looking for that kind of sort of like art instruction for a while. And um, very rarely do you come across something like that, you know? That's great. Yeah. 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 You should definitely give him a follow on YouTube. He's, he's worth, uh, I've learned a lot from him. Uh, and yeah. he's very, he has a great kind of presence. He's, you know, he's, he's entertaining to watch as well, which is important, you know, when you're learning from people. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it can be incredibly bland art instructional right. videos. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure a lot of people, uh, you know, they see what you're doing. They see the, the modeling that you're doing in ZBrush. And they probably are just thinking, you know, rightly so, that it looks like it's on a completely different level. Like, you know, inaccessible, just way beyond anybody's abilities, you know, and like a superpower. Uh, and I know that ZBrush is intimidating. It, it almost feels like you're trying to learn to play guitar or something. At least that's what it looks like from the far side. But, uh, you know, I mean, with, without that much instruction, you can get to a point where you can make a cool shape and light it up and render it well enough that you have a tattooable model. I mean, you could, you could probably learn enough to do that in a day, right? That's exactly it. Um, it's it's actually I've always considered the learning curve of ZBrush to be quite steep, but um, now that I've kind of been um, 
more and more people seem to be taking notice of it, and especially in the tattoo world. And um, I've been, you know, kind of showing a lot of people the ropes. And of the stuff that I've seen people kind of create on their first day of making, of using the program, I was blown away. Uh, for example, my uh, my workmate Nathan Matheson, he's not a very like computer minded guy, I would say generally, but um, just over this lockdown, after after we did our first ZBrush sculpt, he downloaded ZBrush and. Um, and made this awesome crab creature within like a day, and it was it was really good, you know. It was, so it's definitely something that I think a lot of people can pick up, but there is that kind of technical aspect of it where you play with numbers and sliders a lot to try and you know get some of the effects that we need that will definitely scare some people off. But once you get past that hurdle, it's very very intuitive. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think I, that that's the whole thing is getting to the intuitive point, and yeah, it, yeah. It took, yeah. I'm still getting there. Yeah. Guy, how long have you been working in, in uh, ZBrush? Um, well, okay, so I did a back piece from a fairly simple ZBrush model years and years ago, seven or eight years ago. Uh, and, and, you know, I've done a few small things that here and there, but, you know, recently uh, I've gotten to a point where I, I actually can't move much farther forward in my artistic plans until I can get a more working, you know, knowledge of it. And so, uh, you know, last year, uh, before the shit hit the fan, Hoka was visiting the States and he was going to come through, uh, Southern Illinois. We were going to build the ZBrush model and tattoo it on somebody's back. We had a client, everything dude has bells on. He was so excited. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, shit happened. So it now, now that they're experiencing shutdowns again, uh, we've kind of hopped back on it. He and Adrian Dominic and I had a, a session together uh, a couple weeks back where we just uh, passed some models around. You know, we were able to email each other the, the, the shapes. Hmm. And uh, I asked a lot of questions and learned a lot of stuff. And uh, hopefully a lot of people who are watching pick things up to anybody who I uh, didn't get a chance to sit on, in on that. Uh, you can find it in the Reinventing the Tattoo video archive. Um, it's filled with a lot of stuff that if you're just just barely, you know, past that first day and you're trying to figure out all your tools, uh, there's a lot of discussion of the basic tools and how to, uh, how to do the various different things with, uh, you know, pull and stretch and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, with your I, I, I don't mean to hop in, but um, we probably have like two or three more minutes before everyone should mm -hmm. like let everyone know okay. where to find you and then sign off. Uh, but guy, to that point, uh, like Christian Perez was, I was just looking at his uh, page. He's got some ZBrush. We might. Oh, exactly. There's a lot of the bio people that that are on the yeah. app that are really really chomping at the bit for another like bio collaboration maybe uh we should set aside some time like two or three weeks out and be like if you're into zbrush we're going to do a zbrush collaboration where we could you know like you know the, yeah, maybe yeah, we have yeah, yeah. people to pass it around but um get some of those other bio people in yeah let's do that yeah maybe in the next two uh, week or two that that sounds like a blast uh yeah. Yeah, so awesome. uh, <laughs> Jake, any, any final questions you want to ask Coco before we have to sign off? No, but I, I know you guys have something else to get to. So it was, it was great meeting you. I love your work. I'm going to give you a follow as soon as we, as soon as we get off of here. And uh, I'll, I'll be sure to, to uh, I'll give you a follow. You give Andrew Tischler a follow. And then we both sounds good. something today. <laughs> so, awesome. Thanks very much. Man. Right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Good to see you, guy. Cheers. All right. Well, uh, I, you ready to draw the figure? I'm ready to draw the figure, man. Outstanding. All right. Well, I've already got my canvases and everything. Uh, see you oh, there. Uh, Do you have the other uh, sounds good. Awesome. What about just we'll catch up uh, in the future, everybody. Thank you. For, so anybody that is tuning in live, you should be heading over to the Reinventing app or the Reinventing YouTube channel because we're going to restart the stream in the South Pacific lockdown figure drawing session number two or three. Is it number two or three, Hoko? Uh, I think it's the second one. Yeah. Second one, number two. One, one ZBrush, one ZBrush sculpting. And then, yes, yeah, so this will be the second one. Yep. Number three. Awesome. Yep. We'll catch up in, a, in Hoko. You have the other uh, Zoom link? Uh, I have not yet. No. Ah, fantastic. Well, uh, we're going to hang up now, and I will make sure that you get it within 120 seconds, within two minutes. 